Hello, actors! I'm so glad that you're going to be bringing your talents as a voice actor into our radio drama production. Here are some directions and pointers for you so that you can make the best recording that you possibly can. First things first, if you haven't already, of course you're going to need a script. You will find that script in the shared folder for our production, and the link for that may have come to your parents' email. So go ahead into that folder and then find the script that has your character's name, not your real name, but your character's name on it. All of your lines will already be highlighted for you. You don't need to memorize these lines, but you do absolutely need to practice them. Once you have that script, print a copy for yourself so that you have a printed version of it to work with when you record. Now, it's possible that you will have problems accessing this file, especially if you try to go in through your email account, because sometimes kids' email accounts, especially if they come through school, are kind of locked down so you can't do certain things online. If you have any trouble getting to your script, no worries. Just go to your parents and say, Mom, I need your help getting my script. Ask your mom to go in through her email account, download your script for you, and then you should be able to use it with no problem. In your script, you will find some stage directions. Stage directions, of course, are directions for the actor that are enclosed in the little curly marks, the parentheses on both sides of them. If you see these stage directions, they're generally going to tell you something about the sounds for our radio drama. If the stage direction begins with the word sound, like sound footsteps, don't make that noise because we're going to add it in editing. If it doesn't begin with the word sound, but just tells you something to do with your voice, like gasp <gasps> or shriek, ah! then you go ahead and make that sound with your voice as you're recording. So again, if you see the word sound, don't do it. We'll add that in editing. But if it doesn't have the word sound and just describes a noise that you can make with your voice, then go ahead and make the noise as you record. You may run across a few other stage directions in the script. Most of them will be pretty self-explanatory. If it tells you to do something with your voice, well, you do it. But there's a couple that, that might need a particular mention. One of them is if you see the word off, that's short for off mic or off stage. And what it means is that you're at a little bit of a distance when you speak. So if you can, take about two or three steps back from your recording device and deliver that off line a little bit off mic. If you see the words calling loudly, what that means is that you need to speak a little bit louder than usual because you're talking to somebody who's at a short distance away from you instead of like right next to you. If you don't have a ton of lines in our play, maybe up to say eight or 10, then your job is pretty easy because you can record every one of your lines in a single audio file. But if you have a like big bunch of lines in our play, then you're gonna have to divide those lines up into chunks. And here's what I'll ask you to do, is to divide your script into chunks of two to three pages each and then record each of those chunks separately. Now, you don't have to record every individual line separately, just record each chunk of pages separately. What we wanna make sure is that you don't end up with a huge audio file that is gonna to be too big to email. When you're practicing your script and when you record, be extra careful to enunciate. That means to speak clearly and distinctly and don't fall into the temptation of going super fast with your lines. It's better to be a little bit too slow than a little bit too fast. Remember, if the audience cannot understand your words, they cannot understand our radio play because the words are all they got. When you're ready to record, you're gonna to need to download an app that's made by a company called Digipom, D-I-G-I-P-O-M. It's called Easy Voice Recorder and it's free. It works on iPhone and Android, so you can get it in either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And when you put that on your phone, it's got some special features that are working behind the scenes without you even having to do anything that will help make your life easier and my life easier. So please do not use the built-in voice recorder on your phone, even if you have one. Instead, use the Easy Voice Recorder app because it's gonna simplify life for both of us. 
Once you've downloaded the Easy Voice Recorder app, it is time to set up to record. So go into a room that is not echoey, echoey, echoey. So we want a room that does not sound like a bathroom or a basement. So good places to record might be your bedroom or the living room where there's lots of nice soft surfaces like couches and beds and curtains. Once you're in that quiet room, make sure that you shut the door and then you're going to lay out the papers that you need to record in advance so that you don't have to rustle papers and make noise while you're trying to record. So if I've broken my script up into chunks, I'm going to lay out those two or three pages that are in my first chunk and now I'm ready. Your voice is the only one that we want to hear on the recording. Don't worry about the other characters of the scene. We don't want to hear them. We only want to hear your lines in your voice. Set your recording device down on a pillow or a mattress or another soft surface. It should be about one or two feet away from your mouth. Make sure the screen is facing up and make sure it is not covered by anything like a blanket because that will end up producing rustling noises or muffled audio. Whatever you do, don't hold the phone in your hand while you record because that is almost guaranteed to produce rustling noises. Instead, set it down face up and uncovered on a soft surface. Now, if you use the built-in microphone on your phone, you know, the thing that you normally talk into on a call, it'll probably sound fine. But if you can use a headset to record your audio, it'll probably sound even better. So it can be a tiny little wireless Bluetooth headset like this one, or it can be a big old ugly headset that plugs in with a wire like this one. Either one is fine, but if you use a headset, it's probably going to give you better quality audio. Make a test recording first though to make sure, and we're gonna talk about that next. Okay, time to make a test recording. What you do is open up Easy Voice Recorder, go to the Record tab, which should automatically be open when you open the app, and then tap the big round record button. When you're done recording, tap the check mark, not the pause button, to end it. When you make your test recording and all of your other recordings for our radio drama, make sure that you leave two seconds of silence at the beginning of each recording before you begin your first line, and two seconds of silence at the end of the recording after you finish your last line. That makes sure that you don't accidentally cut off any lines or parts of lines, and it's very important. If you see a lot of red in your recording, then what that means is that you are too close to the microphone. So if you're using the built-in microphone in your phone, back away from the phone. If you're using a headset microphone, move the headset a little bit further away from your mouth. A couple little red lines are okay. Solid red is bad. As my test recording, I recorded a tongue twister several different times with my microphone at different distances from my mouth. So let's go ahead and play it back now by going over to the Listen tab in Easy Voice Recorder. I'm going to hit play and take a listen. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Whoa, okay, that was weird. Did you hear all those like breathy, almost boomy sounds whenever I said a P? Um, radio people call that popping your plosives because plosives are the consonants that come out with a lot of air. So like your puzz and your buzz and your tuzz. You do not want that breathy sound with your recording because there's really no way to get rid of it in editing. It just sounds bad. Now the reason why it was so hard to understand me there, why my plosives were popping so badly, is because I was almost eating my microphone. It was directly in front of my mouth. It was too close. So I tried moving it a little bit further away and making another recording, which is this one. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now that one was undoubtedly better, but I still heard some popping of plosives, still heard some breathy sounds. So what I did for my final recording was I actually moved my microphone slightly off to the side of my mouth. Not way off, like way out here, that'd be dumb, but just moved it a little bit off so that the all the air from those plosives would pass by the microphone instead of hitting it directly. And this time I got a pretty solid recording. Listen to this. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Mm. Now that's pretty good. That's what we're going for. 
Okay, so we've got my test recording. That means now I know how far away my mic needs to be from my mouth. When you hear your test recording, you wanna make sure that you sound like you're close to the microphone, but not so close that it's making funny noises. Funny noises can include popping your plosives where you get that breathy or booming sound anytime you say certain consonants, or it can be a squawky sound when you play it back like the, like the audio is too loud for your speaker. If you hear either one of those things, it means that you are too close to the microphone, you need to move it a little bit further away from your mouth. If your voice sounds natural, like you're close to the microphone but not eating it, then you're probably just about right and you're ready to record for real, for real. Now, one other warning if you're using a headset for your recording, and that is that you never should adjust your headset during the recording. By all means, adjust it between recordings if you're, you feel like you're too close or too far away, that's good. But never adjust your headset during a recording because anytime you touch any part of your headset, it is going to make a noise that is probably going to come across in the recording and it's basically going to ruin your lines. Now that you have a successful test recording, you've got your mic at the right distance, you are ready to record your lines. So stand up because that'll give you energy. Don't sit down and then have at it. As we say in the theater, break a leg. Now that you have recorded your lines, it's time to go over to the Listen tab and listen to your lines. Now, you may hear some problems. You may find out that you stumbled over a word or that you left out a line or maybe there was a weird noise somewhere. Uh, maybe somebody made a noise in another part of your house and it came through on the recording or maybe you rustled a paper by mistake, whatever. No big deal. Just say, hey, Take one didn't work, let's do take two and record it again. It's not a problem if you have to record this two or three times or even a little more than that before you get it right. Please send us your best work because your best work is going to go into producing the best radio drama that we possibly can. Now, two, two things that I need to say about this, okay, as you listen to your work. Number one, you may not like hearing the sound of your own voice in the recording, and that's okay, a lot of people don't. Don't worry about it, your voice sounds perfectly fine to everybody else. And number two, please do not send us a recording unless you have listened to it and fixed any mistakes in it first. Because if there are mistakes in that recording, I'm gonna hear it, and more importantly, when they listen to it, your audience is going to hear it. And we don't want that to happen. We want them to hear awesome. Once you've fixed any problems and are happy with your recording, it's time to email it to Drama by George. And here's how you do that. You're gonna go back to the Listen tab in Easy Voice Recorder, click the Share icon next to the recording, which looks kind of like a less than sign or a triangle. And then from the drop-down menu, choose the email service that you have on your phone, like I have Gmail. Then send the recording to drama at dramabygeorge.com. Make your subject line your school name or the name of your camp, your character name in the play, and then add a number if you're sending more than one recording. So if you go to Norton Elementary School and your character name is Heather, and this is the first recording that you're sending, your subject line might read Norton Heather 1. Well, once you email us your lines, you are done. You have completed your work as a voice actor in our radio drama. But it's possible that you're gonna run into some problems somewhere along the way as you walk through this process, okay? So if you do, let me give you a few places that you can go for help. Number one, you can watch the section of the video where you had the problem again, because if you watch it again, it might make more sense. Number two, if you want to see a written copy of what I've been telling you about in the video, just look down below this video in the description. You'll see a link there to a written version of our radio drama recording instructions. Number three, you can ask somebody else in your house, Daddy, help! And number four, if all else fails, you can get in touch with Drama by George. You can email drama at dramabygeorge.com or call us at 502-718-5090 and we will do our best to help. I'm so glad that you are a part of our radio drama 
and I am looking forward to hearing your work as a voice actor. As you get out there and record those lines, break a leg. <laughs>